Alrighty, so today we're going to be taking a look at Inkscape. Inkscape is an open source vector graphics illustration program which you can download from Inkscape.org. I originally created the artwork that we're going to be making as placeholder assets for a friend's video game prototype. After some brief discussion, we settled on the stylized, monochromatic look and feel you can see here. Moving on, our first step is going to be to open Inkscape. I've created a template Inkscape file that you can download from the video's description or from the Taslog website. This file contains examples of all of the elements that we're going to be creating for use as visual reference as we go. The elements that we're going to be creating are galaxies, suns, stars, comets, planets, asteroids, and a shuttle. To start with, we're going to work on the galaxy. Select the pen tool and draw three nodes. This will become the arm of our galaxy. Select this using the selection tool and click once on the object to enable the rotation handles. Drag the rotation point down to the bottom right hand corner. Go to the edit menu and select clone, create clone. This creates a duplicate of the element that we had selected. Go to the edit menu and select copy. Then select paste in place. This places a copy of the clone in the exact position that the original clone was in. When we're done, use the node tool to select the original triangle that we created. By moving the nodes, you can see that the clones that are linked to it automatically update when the original has changed. Bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog by clicking the Fill and Stroke button in the toolbar. From this dialog, we can adjust outline and shading settings for any selected object. Fill our triangle with black so that it and the rest of our clones look like one solid object. Still using the Node tool, hold down Shift and drag away from the outermost node to create a curve. Repeat this process on the outermost node again to create the inner curve. We can use the Node tool to adjust the curve handles as well as the node positions until we have the shape that we want. Select all of the objects using the Select tool, and then select Group from the Object menu. This allows us to treat our original triangle, as well as all of the clones, as a single object. Copy the group, and then paste it in place. With our new group selected, we're going to add a blur from the Fill and Stroke dialog. This should give us a nice glow effect around our galaxy. When it looks good, select both of the groups and apply a solid white fill. At this point, we can see that we've left a black outline around our galaxy. Remove the black outline from the Stroke tab, and we can call our galaxy done. Variations can be made easily by reducing the number of clones contained within the galaxy. Extra distinctiveness can be added by changing the length and the curvature of the galaxy's arms. The next element that we're going to be looking at is the Sun. To start our Sun, we're first going to create a circle using the Ellipse tool. By dragging with Control and Shift held down, we can create a perfect circle. To speed things up, we're going to copy the group containing the unblurred galaxy. If you've been following my steps, you'll find that the blurred group is on top. You can move it to the bottom by selecting it and pressing page down. Once pasted, move the circle to be more or less centered above the galaxy. Using the node tool, select each of the nodes and move them closer together to form a short isosceles triangle. Remove the curve information from each node by holding down control and clicking on the node's handles. As we did with the galaxy arms, hold down shift and drag away from the nodes to give definition to the sun's flares. If you have multiple nodes selected with the Node tool, you can use the same rotation and scaling handles that are available with the Select tool. With the Select tool, select the flares first and then the circle. Bring up the Align and Distribute dialog by clicking the Align and Distribute button in the toolbar. Change the Relative to option to Last Selected and then click the Align Horizontally and Align Vertically buttons. With the flares now centered perfectly, we can deselect the circle and make any scaling adjustments necessary. We can also make any additional node adjustments that might be needed. When it looks good, copy the flares and paste them in place. Then click on the Flip Horizontally button in the toolbar. Rotate and scale to make smaller secondary flares. Make any final node adjustments and then group the circle together with both sets of flares. As we did with the galaxy, copy the sun and paste it in place. Add a blur to the copy and our sun is done. Next, we'll move on to making a star. Select the Star tool and draw a star. Make sure that rounded is set to zero and change the corners to four. Still using the star tool, drag the inner corner inwards while holding control. Rotate the star to be oriented cardinally. Then copy and paste in place. Rotate the copy by 45 degrees and then scale down. If your star ended up being off center like mine, you can use the align horizontally and align vertically buttons from the align and distribute dialog to correct it. Our star is good to go. I haven't bothered here, but you can add a glow to the star using the same method used for the galaxy and the sun. Next up, is the comet. Draw a circle using the circle tool and then select object to path from the path menu. With the circle now a path, 
Use the Node tool to select the bottommost node and drag it down. Drag the top node slightly upwards to create a less rounded head. Copy the comment and paste in place. Add a blur and then use the Node tool to drag the bottommost node down further. The last thing we'll do to make our comet complete is to remove the curve information from the bottommost node. This gives the comet a nice tapered effect. Next up, we're going to draw a ringed planet. Start by drawing a circle with the ellipse tool, remembering to hold down Ctrl and Shift to create a perfect circle. Draw a second ellipse, but make this one short and wide. Place this ellipse over the top of the original circle. Make any adjustments you need so that the top and bottom of the circle are visible. Copy the ellipse and paste it in place. Scale the copy down so that a ring-like portion of the original eclipse is visible behind it. You can change the colour of the copy to make this easier. Select both ellipses and then choose Difference from the Path menu. This will merge the two ellipses in a way that only leaves the parts not overlapping visible. Copy our newly created ring shape and paste it in place. Scale the copy down to create an inner ring. Select both rings and rotate them slightly. Our planet is now done. It's time to make some asteroids! Start by using the pen tool to draw an enclosed shape with four corners. Select each of the nodes with the node tool and make them symmetrical using the symmetrical button from the toolbar or by pressing Shift Y. Adjust the nodes to make a nice organic asteroid shape, then remove the outline and add a white fill from the fill and stroke dialog. Next, draw three circles of varying sizes. These will become templates for craters on the asteroid. Set their fill to black and their opacity to 25%. This will add a darkening effect, signifying deeper craters where circles overlap. Copy the small circle and paste copies in a scattered fashion across the asteroid. Using the Ctrl-V shortcut will cause a copy to appear where the mouse cursor is. Repeat this process for each of the circle sizes, allowing some of the circles to overlap the edge of the asteroid. We can cut craters into the profile of the asteroid by selecting the asteroid and a circle that overlaps its edge and using the Difference option from the Path menu. Select all of the circles and add them to a group. Then clone the asteroid from the Edit Clone menu and set it to be the clipping mask of the group containing the circles by selecting Set from the Object Clip menu with both the clone and the group of circles selected. By double-clicking on the group, we can edit and adjust the circles as though they weren't grouped. You can identify which group or layer you're inside of by looking at the drop-down box at the bottom of the screen. Because our clipping mask is a clone, any changes made to the shape of the asteroid will automatically update the visible area of the group containing the circles. You can leave a group using this drop-down box as well, or by clicking on an object that's not contained within the current group. A nice effect can be gained by adding additional circles that overlap the crater cuts that we've just made. Once we've placed any additional circles we need, we can call our asteroid done. Next, we'll make some impact clouds. Start by creating a large circle and a small circle. Color these circles white and make sure they're at 100% opacity. Paste copies of each circle size to form a cloud shape. Make sure to place some smaller circles towards the middle of the cloud. Copy one of the circles and paste it in place. Set the copy's fill color to be light gray and then move it slightly away from the center of the cloud. Using the lower button on the toolbar or the page down shortcut key, reorder the darker circle so that it sits just below the white circle it was copied from. Repeat this process until every circle has a shadow. If you'd like to change the ordering of a shadow, be sure to select its corresponding white circle so that they can both be reordered together. Once this is done, our impact cloud will be complete and we'll be ready to move on to drawing the space shuttle. Before we start drawing the shuttle, we're going to create a guide by dragging from the ruler onto the main canvas area. Our first step will be to draw the left half of the shuttle's outline aligned to the guide that we've just created. To allow nodes to snap to the guide, you'll need to have the Snap Nodes button from the toolbar selected. Add the half outline to a group of its own and then clone that group. Flip the clone horizontally and then align it with the guide so that it mirrors the left half of our shuttle. Double click on the group so that we can work within it and then remove the outline and set the fill color for the left half of the shuttle to white. Adjust the nodes to better match a shuttle shape using the node tool. As you work, notice that the right half automatically updates. This helps us maintain symmetry with minimal effort. Using the pen tool, draw the left half of the black detailing for the nose and wings. If you don't see this automatically mirrored on the right side, cut the shape you've just drawn, double-click on the group, 
and paste it in place. Remove the details outline and set its fill color to black. Copy the white shuttle shape and use it as a clipping mask for the black detail. Adjust the nodes so that the detail is rounded at the nose and an even length along the wings. Next, draw the left half of the cockpit viewport. Fill it black, remove its outlines and adjust its nodes. Draw a long shape with the pen tool to represent the cargo bay and the cockpit. Remove the outline and set the fill to be a linear gradient. Edit the gradient and change the last stop to be fully opaque. Change the first stop to be light grey. This will give a rounded effect to the cargo bay and cockpit. Next, draw a four cornered shape for the engine housing. Copy the cargo bay shape and then select the engine housing. Select Paste Style from the Edit menu to paste the same gradient from the cargo bay onto the engine housing. Use the Node tool to adjust the engine housing's gradient, then adjust the nodes to be rounded at the top. Draw a three-cornered shape for the tail and then paste the style that should still be in the clipboard. Adjust the nodes to suggest an aerofoil and then adjust the gradient. Next, draw a trapezoidal shape for the left engine nozzle. Remove the outline and set the fill to be a linear gradient. Edit the gradient and make the first stop a dark grey. Make the last stop fully opaque and a medium grey. Change the repeat option in the fill and stroke dialog to reflected. Use the node tool to adjust the gradient to cover the left half of the nozzle. This will repeat the gradient in reverse, giving a darkened effect on both sides of the nozzle. Reorder the nozzle to be below the engine housing and then use the node tool to select the bottom two nodes. Drag the line segment between these two nodes upwards to create a curve. Copy the nozzle and paste it in place. Still using the node tool, move the top two nodes down and drag the curve out to be convex. Change the fill color to be black. This insinuates a shadow inside the nozzle. Copy the nozzle and paste it in place again. Use the node tool to select the top two nodes, then click the add new nodes button in the toolbar to create a new node directly between them. Repeat this process for the bottom nodes and then delete the two rightmost nodes, leaving us with half a nozzle. Align this to the guide and then reorder to be below the engine housing. Copy the half nozzle and paste it in place. Use the node tool to move the top two nodes downwards. Move the node in the middle of the curve downwards and then adjust the node handles so that the curve matches the shape of the shadow on the other nozzles. Set the fill color to black and reorder it to give the same shadow effect as our other nozzles. Next we'll add some detail for the cargo bay. Use the pen tool to draw a line from the guide to the edge of the cargo bay. Click on the Stroke Style tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog and set the width of the line to be 0.5. Use the Node tool to drag a curve handle from the right node to the left node, then move the left node downwards to create a nice rounded effect. Copy this line and paste it in place four more times. Move each copy downwards holding Control to make sure it only moves in one direction. Select all five lines and then click the Distribute Centers Equidistantly Vertically button to space them evenly. Use the pen tool to draw a line along the guide that joins all five of the lines that we've previously created. With this line selected, paste the style that should still be in the clipboard. Finally, we've finished drawing our shuttle. There are some additional adjustments we can make to fix the line that should be visible down the center of the shuttle. This line is actually caused by a common rendering bug that affects Inkscape as well as several other programs. This bug is also responsible for the faint white outline around the shuttle. To remove the white outline, we're just going to move the nodes of the white part of the shuttle inside the black detail area. To correct the line down the middle, we start by selecting the right side of the shuttle, then selecting Unlink Clone from the Edit Clone menu. This converts the cloned group, as well as the elements within it, into separate editable objects. We can remove the line by joining the left halves and right halves of each element together. To do this, select both sides using the Node tool, then select and delete any line segments that run along the guide using the Delete Line Segments button from the toolbar. When this has been done, you should be able to join the selected objects together by selecting overlapping nodes two at a time and clicking on the Join Selected Nodes button in the toolbar. Once all of the overlapping pairs of nodes have been joined for each of the objects, the line should disappear. Keep in mind that the clipping mask for the black detail of the shuttle will only be the left-hand side. Remove this and replace it with a copy of the white outline for the ship. As they are joined, the ordering for some elements will change. Readjust these as necessary. When finished, group it all together and we can call our shuttle done. And that is how you make space. If you're interested in finding out more about Inkscape, you can find tutorials and reference guides on the Inkscape website under the documentation page. 
I hope you've enjoyed this brief Inkscape tutorial, and thanks for watching.